Marcus Conti reporting. Cold New York day. Cold in the heart. So, what should be a day of celebration, right? That the Robert Mueller report, the long-awaited Robert Mueller report, two and a half years of a witch hunt, a criminal investigation into an individual, his family, his inner circle, his friends, with absolutely no evidence of a crime, just speculation, right? has come to a screeching, a finality, right? The report is in and everybody wants to see it. It's a tragedy in American history is what I, what I, you know, the way I see it, right? And what is, what is the Mueller report? What is, what is Russiagate? What was the whole premise, the whole unconstitutional premise of Russiagate? Well, you go back to the 2016 election and you find out. Right? It was Hillary Clinton and the dirty Democrats rigging an election because they had promised an election to Hillary Clinton. Right? Obama, Lynch, all the, all the, all the Congress, all the Senate Democrats. Hillary Clinton was supposed to become the nomination, the nominee, and was supposed to easily defeat the Pipe Piper, Donald Trump, the strategy. And what happened was shit went wrong. And it was this guy, Bernie Sanders, that won the hearts of hearts and minds of the people. And the people rallied around him and voted for him and donated $27 to him. And millions and millions of people raised up this, this guy who said, who spoke for the people, single payer health care, education for all, that it's the oligarchy and the corrupt, the corrupt banks and the corrupt corporations that are raping our country. That voice was very loud and very clear. And it challenged the status quo. And Russiagate was born out of that message. So to Bernie Sanders, we're forever grateful for bringing that, that message to the forefront when no one had the, had the fortitude, the insight, the political will to speak it. Brave, courageous, right? Great American. A great American did that for us. And we should never forget that, despite how the spin machine spins it. But here we are in Russiagate, where we're about to see a report about that concludes that that nobody was nobody was indicted for the things they said they should have been indicted for russian collusion <laughs> collusion in itself is not a crime right to but it's a it's it's what used to be called a moral disgrace where a democrat where a a political party colludes with the media and should be disgraced because of it but now we don't live in those times anymore. We live in a time of immorality where, where it doesn't matter. It's political politics outweighs human integrity, human, human um, truth, human truth, right? It's better to be right than to be, than to be honest. So right now on television, you'll see all the spin masters, MSNBC, CNN, right? All, all spinning, Washington Post spinning frantically to see the Mueller report, right? Trump wants to see it. 
the Congress voted to see it, to let everybody see it. The American people paid for it in, in, you know, to the tune of $100 million in tax money. And we will see it. And what will be in there is insignificant, really. We already know it, that there is no indictments. That, that the idea of Russia interfering with the election sprang out of the 2016 election where Hillary Clinton and the dirty Democrats and the dirty Democratic, democratically controlled media lost control of the narrative when they got caught cheating. And somehow Podesta's emails and Hillary Clinton's emails and all this stuff leaked out into the public domain and it showed what a fraud the whole thing was. That the whole the whole democratic political apparatus was quid pro quo, where monies were given to, in that case, the Clinton Foundation, and funneled into favors across the across Congress, across Senate, across the whole spectrum, probably judicial, right? Certainly the executive branch. The FBI, the CIA, everybody was getting the money. Right? So it, it, Russia, the, the idea of Russiagate masked the whole corrupt apparatus of the democratic operation, and probably the Republicans too, because they're silent on the issue. Right? I think the only one who ever really came clean with, uh, in it was Certainly Senator Grassley, cer certainly Trey Gowdy did a, a brilliant job at penetrating the, the truth of the matter, that it was a CIA, you know, John Brennan saying that we don't do evidence, and Trey Gowdy piercing that in Congress and such. So there are, there are noble people in Congress, but in the final analysis, the story of Russia and Russiagate was a figment of Robbie Mook and... Hillary Clinton and John Podesta's imagination that they had lost control of the narrative that the secrets were leaked out to the public through WikiLeaks probably through brave leak you know insiders that leaked it certainly not any you know and there there was their born was Guccifer and and the fictitious Russians that came in and and hacked the election. They hacked the DNC. But we found out that that crowdsource, CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike, I'll give my crowds, crowds mixed up. CrowdStrike, the organization that was hired by the Democrats to go in there and, and, and erase, literally erase the evidence in the Democratic uh, DNC computers, the individual computers, Right? was hired to go in there and do the scrub. Right? And when the heat got really intense, what happened? Hillary Clinton deleted 30,000 emails. Right? Said so she scrubbed, it, scrubbed the, the server. Scrubbed the server with a cloth? You mean with a cloth? Remember when she said that on TV? Remember when she lied to Congress six times, said uh, there was no, um, that I never sent or received classified information? Remember that? That I didn't delete any anything. Those were about yoga, and 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 my my uh, daughter's wedding. Remember when she said all that stuff? What were they hiding? They were hiding the evidence, which is quid pro quo, which is pay for play at the highest levels of government through some of the worst adversaries America has ever had. Right in the in the case of the Clintons, it's Saudi Arabia, it's Pakistan, it's. It's anybody who will give the money for a favor. And that's the essence of what Russiagate was designed to hide. All right? That's a lot. All right? <laughs> but two years later, you know, so now... So now William Barr, right? The great William Barr is going to come in and save the day. He has the report. The Mueller report. The special counsel who was, who was chosen by the dirty political entities that we're talking about to go in there and fix what they couldn't fix. 
but they refused to investigate. Congress and we have plenty, we had plenty of people. We have a whole State Department, a whole, you know, Justice Department to handle stuff like this, but they wouldn't do it and didn't do it because of political conflicts of interest. Right? So we had to get a special counsel, special, outside, nonpartisan, to investigate a crime that didn't happen. A fabrication of Hillary Clinton and John Podesta and Robbie Mook's imagination to hide the fact that they cheated, got caught, and the, 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 the ramifications of admitting something like that are, I mean, you know, d detrimental to American democracy. But we already know that, right? Don't we already know that it's a lie, it's a cheat, it's a steal? But right? right? that Russiagate, it was just a, it was a big lie. They, they gaslighted the entire country. They gaslighted my mother, right? They made people believe that, that the president of the United States, the elected president, and again, you, you know, I'm no fan of Trump. I'm no fan of Hillary Clinton. I, I, I didn't vote for Trump. I wouldn't vote for Trump. I fundamentally disagree with his economic philosophy. I think he, he represents the, the, the business class and he's savvy enough to dupe enough people to, for them to believe that he's on their side by pushing all of the all of the emotional buttons, right? I think, you know, he's not he's not my candidate and never will be. And you know, I may never vote again. But but the deep corruption in our country is what I'm trying to say. Where does it come from? What causes it? How do we get how do we get over it? How do we get past it? Right? Because a report will come out today, tomorrow, and it'll say that there was no no collusion between Trump, nothing criminal, maybe talk, a president talking to a foreign power, discussing discussions there's no crime but but all all along the democrats were saying there were crimes what is it that guy uh fucking well, i don't know what senate how many senators and congressmen said that they found actual co evidence of collusion criminal evidence of collusion which is not a crime that trump colluded with directly with putin you remember hillary clinton putin Trump is a Putin puppet. You remember, you remember all that stuff, how they were gaslighting the country? How they were lying to the American people over and over again? Where politics, politics have become, there's a cop car in there. <laughs> where, where politics override our, our morality. Where, over, where, where politics override truth. Where now the spin machine kicks in and, you, and you'll, hear, you'll hear William Burr, the AG, he's a spy, that he didn't give up all the evidence, that he's withholding evidence, that he's working with Trump and the Russians to hide the truth of Russiagate. They won't quit. Right? They're, they're too deep in. Right? To all the pundits that refuse to look at the evidence, that refuse to accept the fact that that the evidence is 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 there and is on the table, in James Comey's own words, the FBI director at the time, who came out and, and laid out the foundation for an indictment for Hillary Clinton. See, there there lies the problem too. No consequence to crime. Right? It's, it's crime without consequence. Hillary Clinton should have been indicted for multiple felonies, lying to Congress, 
you know, certainly deletion of evidence on the subpoena, deletion of emails, right? quid pro quo at the highest level, tax evasion, foundation fraud, election overt election fraud, rigging elections, paying off people, offering favors when she wins and she's in the White House. There was so much evidence of corruption there that should have been prosecuted and never was. Not a single head ever rolled for any of that and probably never will. Right? But, but you could see that because it's become normalized, the lying, the cheating, the, the, the overt negligence to the law, the disrespect to the American people, and the, the impotentness of elections, that they don't really count, that, that the whole thing is rigged anyway. So why do we care about what the people think? We're in charge. So as we move forward, we still have rigged elections. The elections are, Democrats never fessed up, right? They never fessed up. So we have, we have fake elections. We have overt, insane oligarchy, monopoly at the highest level. And where do my talks always end? You know, where, where do I find myself always ending? Trying to drive home the point that that it's not a political problem or a a moral problem or a a um, a social problem that is causing the grief in this country. And what is that grief? What is the grief? It's it's income and wealth inequality. It's people living in abject poverty, not having basic. Um, basic uh, 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 a basic livelihood where they have to work two and a half, three jobs. That's not normal. I'm, I'm exaggerating. A job and a half and not be able to pay the bills. Right? Where 60% of the country doesn't have $400 to their name. Where people are, are scrounging on food stamps. Living in 10 cities all across the country. Right? Where we, then, where we then justify on other crimes, like in Venezuela, create, saying that they have problems. They have a humanitarian crisis, not us. And, 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 and people in this country will continue to, to, to champion that. Look at, the, look at the fact of their life and then, and then echo what the television set and the, 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 the fake commentators on TV tell them that the economy has never been so good. But the evidence in their own life suggests otherwise because if it didn't, you wouldn't be certainly listening to someone like me or interested in seeing our country get to a better place because you would have concluded that we are in a great place. Right? So again, it's I, I see it as a I see it as a tragedy where we're looking for a political solution to I don't know an economic problem. You have to get money out of politics. You have to you have to bring the corporations down to size. When they failed in two thousand eight. When they collapsed, when the banks almost froze, we should have let them die, but we didn't. We bailed them out. And they've gotten bigger and stronger and more corrupt. And there doesn't seem to be any end to that. Right? We have to get the money out of politics where the money from those corrupt organizations flows into the political system and, and, and continues the continues the problem 
There, there the problem continues. The money flow in politics. So, so enjoy your victory. I know people will celebrate today. Um, it's fake. We told you so. You'll have all the pundits. See, I said it. I said it. I was right. I was right. You were. It was, it was fake. Russiagate was fake. But we've been saying it all along. There's no surprise. There's no mystery. Right? They're, they're, and, and even in the face of... I love the pundits that say, you don't trust your government. Right? You, remember, you know when they said that? Like they say, oh, you don't, you don't, you have to, you don't trust the, the, the intelligence agencies. Well, now the intelligence agencies are about to tell you that the whole thing was a sham. That there was no evidence. That corporate media ran hours and hours on end. Tons and tons of bullshit stories about Russian collusion to no avail. None of it, none of it amounted to a hill of beans. So here we are going forward. What do we do, you know? We talk about it. Definitely we talk about it. You know? I don't know. And then there's this, this problem of ideology, right? Is elections going to solve our problems? Not in this climate. The yellow vest idea could. Today is, I believe, Act 19 of the yellow vests in history. The French get it. In Venezuela, the people are holding out oligarchy. The Venezuelan people get it. Here in America, we're, we're gaslighted. We're too smart for our own good. We're so smart. We're so well off. We're, first, we're so first world that we can't stand ourselves. That we have to tell everybody and everything, call them the third world. Today the French are going to fight against an army. You think, it's, you think that oligarchy will give in easily? No, today the French, the F Macron and the French oligarchs are upping the ante on the French people by calling in the army. Right? As if the police weren't enough. Now they're militarizing against the people. Where did we see that? I mean, it's, it's the Nazis did it, right? I don't know. When does it come home? I mean, I want to. I want to be happy that I was right, and we were all right, and and that that Russia Gate was fake, and it was it was bullshit, and and we all knew it. But again, it, we're, we're gaslighted. That's where the attention is, right? We we focus on on that stupid report instead of talking about the the real issues, which is our well-being. As American, as an American people, our prosperity, our happiness, our standard of living. And I know it's difficult. I know people are, are polarized. And even people watching this will say, oh, no, no, that's, no, no, no. The, 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 the income and wealth inequality, that's good. It's, it's, that's capitalism. We, we need that. We need more of that. Rather than study capitalism and know that that what we don't what we have is unfettered oligarchy, monopoly, right? Which is is very different than a true capitalist society. So so enjoy the win. Enjoy the victory. Marcus Conti reporting.